Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for August 5th, 2021. What I want to talk about today is the continued domination of geopolitics at the heart of U.S. and British and NATO policy. The idea of deploying forces in such a way as to create enemy images, divide the world up, split nations against each other. This is a classic doctrine that was developed at the beginning of the uh, 20th century to dis disrupt any potential alliance <clears throat> which could emerge against the British Empire. Now this comes up in, in the context of a discussion in the U.S. Congress yesterday by uh, Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman uh, in which the Biden administration moved to repeal the 2002 authorization to use military force, which was just a, used to justify the invasion of Iraq. Now remember, the invasion of Iraq was based on completely false stories that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, which was uh, the so-called documentation of this came from the highest levels of British intelligence from MI6. Sir Richard Dearloff presented the documentation to Colin Powell and the Bush administration, which then presented it to the UN Security Council and to the Congress. And it turned out to be completely false, and it was known to be false. Also was the claim that Iraq was involved in, in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Now, the argument Sherman gave for repealing the authorization to use military force is that Iraq is now a U.S. ally and that therefore there's no reason to have an authorization against Iraq. But secondly, that it, it would harm, that repealing it would harm Iran because Iran wants to keep Iraq within its sphere of influence. This is classic geopolitical thinking. Why not repeal it because it was a mistake? because it was based on false pretenses. It was a false flag operation designed to justify the deployment of large numbers of forces from the U.S. and NATO, the destruction of a nation, Iraq, and then by uh, further implication, it was used to justify the Libyan operation, uh, and then later on the uh, support of the so-called moderate rebels in the civil war in Syria, which was really not a civil war, but was an invasion of jihadists funded by U.S. allies, Turkey and, and Saudi Arabia, uh, trained and, and facilitated by the CIA. So why, instead of uh, repealing the authorization, it should be repealed, but why not repeal geopolitics? The repeated deployment of U.S. forces around the world is justified by use of these kinds of authorizations to use military force based on the flimsiest of false flag operations. Now, similarly, there was a, a leak in uh, the United Kingdom of documents on a foreign office psychological warfare operations policy in the Balkans to promote a pro-UK, pro-European Union uh, policy views and to manipulate opinion against Russia. Now, this is typical. It's part of the regime change color revolution strategy, which is directed by Chatham House, which is British intelligence, uh, MI6, and the Foreign Office. There have been reports from our uh, colleague in um, England, uh, Mike Robinson, of the deployment of funds to the BBC and Reuters by the Foreign Office, by MI6, to shift or to, to manipulate the press coverage, the press stories that are produced by BBC and Reuters. Uh, also, the use of, of such funding to oppose so-called malign influence includes training bloggers, funding alternative media sites, and so on. Uh, this includes such operations as the Integrity Initiative, Bellingcat, and other kinds of British operations. Now, this is, should be mapped on top of what, what came out of the expose of how the British operate in Washington, which came from the documents that were leaked from Sir Kim Darak, the former British ambassador to Washington, 
who sent documents back to the Foreign Office talking about how the Trump administration is dysfunctional, how Trump is inept, and he said that to deal with this, uh, the British ambassador said, his policy was to, quote, flood the zone, unquote, using, quote, Trump whispers. In other words, talking to people who were around Trump to give them policy initiatives and to direct the intelligence in ways that would favor what the British want from the United States. This was parallel to the regime change operation run out of MI6. Again, Sir Richard Dearloff played a, re a leading role through the deployment of one of his former top Russia agents, Christopher Steele, in creating the Russiagate documents that were used to target the Trump administration. So this is, the, these leaks are useful because what they show is how this continues to the present day. Let me give you an example. There have been two stories about Iranian actions in the Gulf. Now, remember, one of Darak's leading complaints about Trump was that he was not taking the false flag reports as the basis of launching strikes against Iran. So now we have in the last days, one is a, a claim that Iranian forces shot a drone into an Israeli registered tanker, and then a, a completely bogus charge that an old freighter called the Asphalt Princess had been hijacked, allegedly again by Iranian hijackers. Where did these charges first appear? From Israel and from the United Kingdom. Clearly an effort to engage the United States in strikes against Iran. Precisely at the moment in which there's an effort being made by Russia, China, Pakistan, and others to bring Iran into the negotiations to solve the crisis in Afghanistan. Uh, that, that Iran has re good relations with China. There are efforts to uh, incorporate Pakistan and Afghanistan into the Belt and Road Initiative through the Middle East, including through Iran. Instead, the geopoliticians want to use Iran as a basis of blowing up the Middle East and preventing peace from occurring in the region. So the, the fact that the U.S. is now backing these charges from the United Kingdom uh, against Iran, once again saying that intelligence indicates we are highly confident in these reports and so on, just as they were highly confident initially in the Steele dossier, which was used to run operations to get the FISA court to issue warrants to spy on the Trump campaign. This is British geopolitics. When we at the LaRouche organization go after the British control of US policy, this is not just flogging a dead horse. What we're identifying is a specific means of manipulating policy, which is then coordinated through media sources designed to convince the American people that we, we still need to spend three quarters of a trillion dollars a year on defense expenditures, and that's on the, the uh, open budget, in order to combat threats to American interests. Well, haven't we seen enough of this yet? We're now moving out of Afghanistan, possibly also out of Syria and Iraq. Do we really need to use these same intelligence sources to get us involved in a war in the South China Sea or in Ukraine? This is why Helga Zepp-LaRouche has repeatedly said the key to peace is to end geopolitical doctrine and replace it with the idea that the Chinese call win-win diplomacy, mutual benefit, that you act in the interests of others and that you don't use false intelligence cooked up by a force in London that's committed to keeping the United States engaged in these regional endless wars. That's my report for today. If you have some questions for me, send them to me at harleysch at gmail.com. Uh, we'll probably have some time tomorrow to take them up. Thank you and see you then.